famous Mrs. Chamberlain. And I see that your pictures are quite as fine as I've been told. After luncheon, I'll show you the gallery, but now I have business to attend to. The mysterious Mrs. Chamberlain, an immodestly rich widow ostracized by New York's tone, is one of the amazing characters of the Gilded Age series by HBO, inspired by real people and their life events that shape America's cultural development at the turn of the century. Just like her real-life protagonist, she possesses a particularly impressive art collection that is proudly displayed in her Fifth Avenue mansion. My eyes of a art historian immediately ignited when I saw and recognized the world-famous artworks in her house. So I dived into the research on who was her visionary prototype and did she really own all those pieces of art. We talked about the life of the fabulous Arabella Huntington, the real-life inspiration for Mrs. Chamberlain, in my previous video on this channel. Briefly, like Sylvia Chamberlain, Arabella was the second wife to an extremely wealthy American industrialist, Collis Huntington, whom she married only nine months after his first wife died of cancer. Just like Chamberlain, the new Mrs. Huntington also had a son born out of wedlock. The town didn't wish to close the eyes for such daring liberty of spirit, so the Astors and the Vanderbilts bear them from New York society. I was with the husband of another woman while she was still alive. I broke the rules. So, if you want to know all the shocking details of why she got expelled from polite society, make sure to watch that video. You may find it in my dedicated playlist, where I map the universe of all Gilded Age characters and their real trace in history. Yet there was another trait that united both ladies – their impeccable taste in arts. During her lifetime, Arabella assembled an impressive collection of paintings, jewelry, antiques, and other luxury items. She was the force behind the art collection that is now housed at the Huntington Library in California. Did you build the collection together? Mr. Chamberlain was a widower when he married me. He and his first wife did not fully understand the power that money had put into their hands. I showed him. To reflect that personal interest of hers, the Gilded Age producers sprinkled quite a few world-famous masterpieces, sculptures and paintings in the home of Mrs. Chamberlain. But did all of those Monet and Degas belong to her? Let's have a look at every piece in detail. But I'm admiring your pictures. Come into the gallery. They are better there. And here comes the first major difference between the two. Huntington was particularly interested in old masters. That's how they typically called the painters who were born in the period before the end of the 18th century. While the walls of the house of Mrs. Chamberlain are taken by the masters of the 19th century realism and her contemporary impressionists and post-impressionists. This way, there is no chance that the artworks featured in the series could really belong to Arabella. Yet, could they have at least theoretically been part of the large collection of the fictional Mrs. Chamberlain? Did you inherit a collection? Or did Mr. Chamberlain? Oh, no. We are what your aunt would call new people. The series takes place in booming New York in the 1880s. One of the first paintings a art lover immediately spots in the drawing room of Mrs. Chamberlain is the signature ballet piece by the French Edgar Degas. The dancing class was painted by the artist in about 1870. It changed the hands of dealers and private collectors from Paris and London up until 1916, when it finally ended up in New York within the illustrious H. O. Havemeyer collection, which was then bequeathed to the Met Museum in 1929. Interestingly, much of Arabella Huntington's collection was in fact later given to the Metropolitan Museum of Art too. This way, yes, this piece could have been owned by Mrs. Chamberlain, but in reality it did travel overseas much later than the Gilded Age series events unfold. Another picture on the easel in the spacious drawing room is the walk by the French Camille Corot, and again from the present collection of the Met. The curious little girl was painted between 1860 and 1864 and presumably features Emma Daubigny, who later became Corot's family 
Android model. Already in 1891, it was sent across the Atlantic to a private collector in Montreal and then moved permanently to New York in 1965. Another piece that could have been part of Mr. Chamberlain's collection, though perhaps in the second season, while we all move on to the 1890s. This is one of the first paintings we bought together. An early color of the forest at Fontainebleau. That's lovely. This is another monumental Corot and his forest of Fontainebleau from 1834. This piece belonged to a couple of Parisian art collectors before it was sold to an American banker Chester Dale. This happened only in 1934 and soon after his death in 1962 the painting was transferred to the National Gallery of Art in Washington DC according to his bequest. Dale lived in a large apartment in the Plaza Hotel near Central Park in New York and kept his extensive collection of the French realists and impressionists, whom he was particularly fond of. His taste in art is fully shared by the fictional Mrs. Chamberlain. This is marvelous. I'm so pleased. It's by Monsieur Degas. He's one of the group they call the Impressionists. This screenshot features three immediately recognizable works of art. The first one is another Degas, a brilliant and particularly famous sculpture of Little Dancer, aged 14, executed by the artist sometime in 1878-1881. A meter-tall statue from beeswax and clay with a metal armature, rope, paintbrushes, human hair, silk and linen ribbon cotton and silk tutu and linen slippers was the only sculpture that Degas would ever exhibit in public. We were in Paris in 1863 when they mounted their first exhibition. It was known as Le Salon des Refusés. They'd been turned down by the Académie des Beaux-Arts, you see. Hated by raging critics, it still remained one of the artist's most beloved works of art. One contemporary reviewer even called it a terrible reality. Degas never sold it, perhaps he didn't even have such an intention, and it was inherited by his children and remained in France until 1955. This way it had zero chance to land in Mrs. Chamberlain's hall in the 1880s. Purchased by Paul Mellon in 1956, it was bequeathed to NGA in 1999. It's a favorite of mine. You have a wonderful eye. Right behind the statuette, there is a tall, full-length portrait of a Venetian woman, apparently a reproduction of a work by an American fashionable society portraitist, John Singer Sargent. He painted his model during his second stay in Venice back in 1882. Apparently, Sargent planned to show it in the annual Paris Salon, though ultimately it didn't submit it. Mrs. Chamberlain could have been right on target to secure this piece to her collection immediately after its completion. In reality, the ownership path is rather obscure. The Cincinnati Art Museum doesn't unfold the complete provenance of the picture and only attributes its credit line to the Edwin and Virginia Irvin Memorial. Another large canvas was hiding in the back of the above featured scene. It is a huge scene of Paris Street, rainy day, painted by another French master, Gustave Caillebotte, back in 1877. This masterpiece dominated the celebrated Impressionist exhibition of 1877, largely organized by Caillebotte himself, who, thanks to his privileged financial circumstances, was one of the major sponsors of the movement and a caring patron to his fellow Impressionists. This way, Caillebot had no need to actively sell his pieces, so he used to keep most of them to himself and maybe occasionally present them as a gift to his friends. This picture remained with the artist until his death and was kept in France with his descendants until the 1950s. It was then sold to New York-based Walter Chrysler Jr. and after that, in 1964, landed in the Art Institute of Chicago, where it has been hanging in the gallery's permanent collection ever since. In other words, this marvelous cityscape had no chance to appear on the wall of Mrs. Chamberlain's mansion in the 1880s. This painting is almost a mystery piece that was hard to crack, I shall confess. I even had to crop it out and ask AI to help me with the visual search. 
and nope, Google image search didn't help. It belongs to the hand of a lesser known French painter Jean-Jacques Henner. A Bather Echo is one of his signature nude pieces, which is now in the collection of the Met, though in storage and not on display. Why did the series producers chose this rather ordinary piece of art? Perhaps because it was commissioned in 1881 by an American philanthropist and art collector Catherine Lorillard Wolf, a great patron of contemporary French painting and of the Metropolitan. It is a replica of a well-known composition of the same year, now in the Musée National Jean-Jacques Henner in Paris. This way it became another nod to the American women patrons of art of the Gilded Age. Mrs. Chamberlain is by all means representing one of them. And here is another super famous Caibot. His skiffs from 1877 are now hanging in the main floor gallery in the NGA in Washington DC. Just like the above mentioned Paris cityscape, this picture has been kept within the artist's family even after his death and was purchased by the Mellons only in 1966. 19 years later they would present it as a gift to the museum. Again, no way it could be potentially owned by Chamberlain. Last but not least, this exquisite woman with a parasol, Madame Monet and her son, painted by the crowd favorite artist and the happy husband and proud father here, Claude Monet, in 1875. The spontaneity and naturalness of the unconventional portrait were praised when it appeared in the Second Impression exhibition in 1876. No wonder it was immediately purchased by the admirer and changed numerous French owners until purchased by the Mellon family in the second part of the 20th century and transferred to the US. Could Mrs. Chamberlain be the first to negotiate the deal with Monet on such a desired piece? It's up to you to decide. And finally, there is a really challenging it for the saviest art connoisseurs. Could you identify those two pieces on both sides of the wall with a the fireplace? They look like some coral landscape, typical to Barbizon school, don't they? Please, if you happen to have an idea, let us all know in the comments. Well, this was the bird's eye view at the fictional Mrs. Chamberlain and her fabulous imaginative art collection through the lens of historical accuracy. As to the real collection of Arabella Huntington and her first husband, it was inherited by her own son, who later donated several hundred of her paintings to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, including two Rembrandts and a Vermeer. The small collection of medieval and Renaissance paintings from Arabella's own private collection was bequeathed to the Huntington Library in California. I tell you something, the whole idea for my channel started from this article I wrote a year ago inspired by the first season of The Gilded Age. Here I took the liberty and merged my two passions, um, three passions, history, period dramas and art, of course, something I'm engaged in professionally. So I'll be glad if you let me know if you like this format and if you'd like me to make more videos investigating real art pieces in the movies. And yeah, don't forget that you have a whole playlist of other Gilded Age videos waiting for you on my channel. Next time we shall look at the younger generation characters from the series. Thank you for watching and see you there. Bye! I must go. But thank you for showing me your treasures. You must return and I'll show you more.